we've been designing for a land now for over 25 years, but I guess the story goes back a little bit further than that. So um, I started off designing in an era where, where there was a uniform racing rule globally. And uh, so it was very clear where the, uh, where the uh, interest was from a design perspective. And it was a, an era where results mattered hugely. And that was, you know, winning regattas was vital for getting future work. So it's always been a part of the philosophy of our business, really, is to find best compromise, really. So you, don't, you tend not to compromise the performance, but you try to find other virtues that make them nice, you know, stable boats or stiff boats, weatherly boats. Convertible potential or resale potential has been very important to us. We've done um, quite a lot of a lot of variation in our work over the years, really. But but uh, one of the big features has been a lot of round the world race boats that we've done for formats like the Whitbread uh, around the world race, which became the Volvo around the world race. We've done Imoka 60 um, open uh, around the world competition we did with um, Ellen MacArthur. Uh, we've done uh, a lot of short-handed sailing in class 40s and stuff. An interesting project for us was the, uh, the Global Challenge a fleet of 12 boats built of steel, endurance boats. And the boats had to be safe and strong and seaworthy. And uh, uh, our fleet did two fully crewed races around the world and one of them was single-handed, non-stop wrong way around the world by a woman called Dee Kafari and uh, in all of that time those boats they had no major failures. I think that mindset has gone into our production boat work um, where we've tried to represent uh, value not just value in build but value through design in terms of second use or supplementary uh, to, to help maintain residual values in boats. Whatever we do helps to inform everything, you know, so it trickles down into, well, in this instance, obviously, into a land, and uh, a land we started designing for in this sort of period, really. It was uh, shortly after some of these Around the World projects that I've, we first did, the um, first model for a land was a uh, land uh, 295. And it was obviously Slovenia had just escaped, you know, from a became a nation state, and and uh, had been in that situation probably, I guess, only about maybe a year or two when I started did this first boat for Elan, which, although Elan has a uh, has a history, boat building history, much longer than than my design history. Fundamentally, it's been more of a it had been more of a, an Adriatic sort of market, whereas Elan as a company was needing to find a wider market, European market and, and beyond. So I was brought in with a 295 and then it slowly, without any real commitment to the future, but it slowly m morphed into, we did the Elan 36 I think next, and, uh, um, and I think it was then the Elan 333, um, Elan 333 was fairly major for the company, but also for us in a way. It was a great, great little boat. Sometimes it was just sub 10 meters. Um, it addressed a lot of questions, you know, where people were wanting a value, fun sailing boat, but with really good accommodation. And the whole juxtaposition of space and that boat worked really well. It's a nice performing boat, did a lot of good racing, has good track record on the race course in various countries. Um, sold about 500 boats for a land, um, fairly majorly important one for the company. And, and, and the industry generally looked at that boat, I think, and, and they all started, you know, other companies started to design their own, build their own iterations on that theme, really. So it was a fairly, fairly important project. Um, Moving on from there, we really carried on um, uh, with no 
sort of obligation on either party really but we got on as a you know as a, the way we worked uh, with the land uh, you know we've got on well with you know we have good friends in Slovenia um, we go there a lot you know visit the yard and uh, so it's been a it's been a a nice relationship over a long period and I think we've done maybe about 20 over 20 models for a land now over the years um, yeah, so the 333, um, there's so many, too, too many to mention really. The Freeland 40 was a, a very favoured boat, you know, sold a lot of models. 410 uh, equally um, did well in a different, different economic climate, I'd say. And then eventually we started um, moving into a slightly different sector and helping in a sense find a new market sector for a land which was to look at short-handed sailing and bringing it into uh, mainstream really with you know Elan's production capability models like the originally the Elan 450 which then in turn we developed the Elan 310 and the 350 it's been a very enjoyable relationship with the land, but also quite fruitful, really, not just in terms of number of boats sold and, uh, and uh, a range of uh, places where the boats have ended up. But, you know, it's been recognised as well, really, in the, in the industry, and a number of projects have won various awards. And uh, the, the most prestigious one is the, is the Boat of the Year Award, and uh, we won a few of those. and. Um, and, and I guess the one that comes to mind really was because the boat was a bit of a groundbreaking boat was the Elan 350 which be became the E4 with ongoing refinement and and the when that went through the the, the system of, of uh, evaluation by the judges apparently it was a, a unanimous vote which I'm not sure is is all that common so it was a pretty major success yeah, the driver, the driver for us in design, I mean, it's obviously a technical, um, always a technical challenge and, and, the, and, the, and the challenge is something that we really enjoy. But in a sense, the, the biggest challenge really is, which we enjoy equally, is, is uh, you're fulfilling our owner's expectations. You know, there's a great, this pride of ownership thing is really important for us. You know, we're trying to build a, a brand which cares for, those aspects and um, so good control, good sea keeping qualities um, matter as much as speed per se but very often it, you can you know, usually if you do it well you get it right so you get the whole thing together as a package without compromise to safety or um, comfort on board um, so sometimes it's a case of not pursuing the extremes to have more, more moderate sort of hull forms and things like this, you know, to get a more comfortable ride. Uh, so we, we're very sort of anxious to get that side of it right. That, it's always a balance of forces and a balance of utility to, you know, hopefully give an owner a boat that he really has a happy time with with family his family's growing up and um, at the end of the day has good resale value so he can have a happy happy ending to that chapter in his life Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, I've tried to help steer that philosophy yeah. you know, over the years. <laughs> <laughs>